Hello G stars, welcome back to my channel. So finally I'm doing the most requested video. I've been asked on my IG DMs. So this one is for you guys. But before I get into the video, I just want to put out a little bit of information as to uh, what you can expect from this video. This video will help you if you are a fresher, if you're looking for a job change or in general, what can set you apart in terms of work life and uh, be a better professional at workplace irrespective of what field you're from. So I have my laptop over here just because I have a lot of topics to cover and I'll try and get this done in just one part but just in case I'm unable to do so, you will see two part video and the details will be up soon for the part two. And then I'll put each uh, topics timing on the description and you can just jump to the topic whichever you're interested in or you can see it all so let's not wait any further and let's get started so the first topic is resume resume you guys is the most important one and uh, let me tell you why so when you have a job rec you might have like 200 300 applications coming in and it's highly impossible for a recruiter to go through every single resume so you want to make sure you stand apart and when i say stand apart do not put anything fancy do not write stories do not do any of the you know uh, fake stuff because you know the person who is going to be getting your resume know you only and only for your resume so please do not do copy paste work so try and make your resume to the point give your basic information about your name your contact details and everything in just one liner and you can have your aim which basically tells why you're looking for a job outside what is your current expertise and what is it that you're looking for in the next position and then you can have your skill set and say bullet points you know that helps a recruiter who's scanning through so many resumes to quickly glance through the skill sets that they're looking for and that'll help them decide if you fit into the role or you don't so it still gives you a better chance of getting called at just because you have put your skill set right in front experience you guys might write about all the programs and projects that you have worked on and but 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 please do not fake over here and i've seen a lot of folks who, who write oh i have automated that i've automated this but when you ask questions on that they literally do not know what have they automated how have you contributed separately from your teammates are you an independent worker are you a quick learner so put all of that in your resume along with your project and when i say put that you're a quick learner i'm not just saying right you're a quick learner so just give a scenario or oh, tiny like just a one-liner as to like how did you stand apart from the crowd in your own team so how did you cope so this gives an edge over the other candidates so when you're seeing the resume it feels like i already know you i know you have worked on this project i know that these are the skill sets and i know that this is what you brought to the table so that's where you know apart from the skill sets i will get to know that oh possibly you know this person might bring this to my team if i hire him so that's the point about resumes so do not lie and oh yeah how can i forget if at all you have something you know unique or outside of work or if you have won some awards just put that but never make your resume more than one at the max two pages you guys no one has time to read more than that so the entire point should be that your resume is very quick to glance through highlight few keywords if you want and bold not colorful stuff so you highlight a few words so it's when you are glancing through resumes really quick all these keyword skill sets stand out and it's easier to pick your resume over someone else's long essays because nobody has time for that moving on job description and skill set why is reading the job description and skill set so important because you guys you might be in a desperate situation that you either do not have a job or that you're trying to switch a job but whatever the case is it does not justify the fact that you're applying to a position without reading what it is for so make sure you take at least two to three minutes to read the entire job description see if you will really contribute to this and it should not be that you're wasting the recruiter's time or your time for that matter for a job that's not your fit and especially for you know freshers i know it's very difficult for you guys to decide which job is right fit i'll come to that a little later but then if you're trying to switch a job or 
you know you're trying to start afresh please do not apply to positions which you feel you might not fit into just because it's one it's waste of time and two you might not be happy doing a job that you're not actually you know meant to do you might want to be in a position where you don't like working for the job always make sure you pick a job description which you can either relate to or something that you want to learn and you're willing to give it your all skill set See at least if you have one or two, but do not let the skill set stop you from applying. If you feel the description matches and the skill set doesn't match, you can still go ahead and apply. But be prepared to be answering questions from the skill set that they have listed, because primarily that's what they are looking for. Just because you have applied and you attend the interview, it does not mean that you do not answer those questions. So always and always, when you are going for a job change, make sure you are show willing to show that you are really interested in that job. You are really interested in you know the skill set that they are looking for. It's fine. It's really fine. Even if you are a fresher or even if you are changing the path of your career, it's really fine if you do not have the skill set. But invest the time. So whatever job you have applied for, invest a little bit of time to go through that skill set, brush up the basics. All that they're looking for is if, as an organization, I think everyone knows that we cannot have all the skill set. So as much as long as you're trainable and you're a quick learner and you're ready to show that you're willing to learn, anybody will give you a shot. But again, it goes on the fact that you're willing to put in the effort of learning the skill set beforehand before the interview. And for the freshers, uh, for freshers, I would suggest that go for a service-based company if you can. So if you're in India, I would suggest, I would really, really suggest you go to Infosys if you get a chance, because I think that particular company gives you. The entire training it gives you, you know, after your college, it still gives you that good six months training as to what's needed hands-on, and that, my dear friends, is a very, very, very good foundation because it helps you like crazy. What you did not learn in college days, I never learned anything in college days, to be frank. But then, like you know, this training can really help you. And if you're a fresher, you get a job in no matter which company. I would still say pick it because you know at the end of the day, what matters is your experience and how are you learning. And especially if you're a fresher who has no clue what suits you best, if it's testing, automation, QA, is it development or support, whatever the skill set or whatever the you know the domain is, just pick it and excel at it. See if that's what that's a field that you want. If not, you can at later point in time you can always change your path because hands-on is the best way to learn. Get good hands-on knowledge. Be willing to learn. Show that you're passionate. Work on your soft skills. That's the main important thing, which I'll come to a little later. Moving on is soft skills. Guys, I cannot stress how important soft skills are. And you know, when it comes to MNCs, we have to remember that we have people from all walks of their life, from different culture, from different countries. Everyone has a way of talking. Everyone has a way of interpreting. Everyone has a way to interpret the body language. So coming to that, that's why soft skill is so important because when you work in an MNC. You are going to come across people from every different parts of the world, so it's highly impossible to know every culture, how each person behaves. But it's good to have the basics and have at least you know the initial set of etiquettes right. For example, do not make anybody wait. The first and foremost rule: do not make anyone wait, irrespective of job, person, and whatever it is. Everyone's time is super important. Time is money, and everyone knows that. And go for the time. If they say it's eight o'clock, make sure you're there at eight sharp. And you know, it's it just shows that you're willing to put it your all. And apart from that, is the talking etiquette. Make sure you get a person's spelling correct. That's the first and foremost thing in noticing. You know, when you're being introduced to somebody else, if you do not get their name, it's fine. Just ask them again. Remembering their name as well as getting their spelling right is. Very, very important. It shows you that you are present in the moment and you are giving value to the other person. So just know that when you are applying for an interview, that it is 
you're literally being judged. I'm sorry to say that's the only platform where you're being judged brutally. Brutally, they also see how are you going to fit into the team. So especially if they have a multicultural, a global team, that's the first thing that they're going to see how you speak. Are you able to present yourself? Are you able to put your point across correctly? Are you able to convey your point? Are people able to understand you? So all these things are very important and in that case, if you end up saying matlab, ki, those words should not be used. Not just those, like for that matter of fact, whatever is your local language or regional language, please do not use. When you speak English, please just speak English. Um, if you're not comfortable in English or you know if the job is okay to have other languages, please ask whatever language that you're comfortable in, please to just speak in that language. Moving on, and I've had people when I've had an interview with them, they would just put my call on hold. Again, a big no no. You should not do such things. So, when someone asks for your time, be there. You know, mentally, if it's just a phone call, just be there mentally. If you know, all that they get to judge is how are you look. How are you listening to the questions? Are you able to grasp the question? How are you able to answer the question um, the first time that you're saying? Or if they ask you to repeat, how are you able to rephrase? You know, if they've asked for 30 minutes, give your undivided attention of 30 minutes just for your recruiter. You know, if you're working from home, make sure you're in an peaceful environment lock the doors make sure you're not going to be uh, answering any uh, you know someone some guest or someone else at your home make sure you do not attend other phone calls be there be there and be very attentive you know considering it's an interview people are usually nervous that's a given but try and have a small talk usually most of the recruiters do do that they have a small talk before jumping into the interview but try and have a small talk as in how is your day going and you know just start off ease yourself get to know the person get to know the recruiter ask basic questions as to what is this job for and you know uh, what is the experience that they are looking for what is the job role so start off that way you know when you start off the conversation with your recruiter you feel like you know the person and the other piece, person feels like he knows you too he or she knows you too and that gives a sense of calmness and that's a good point that's a good start for you to get the interview going and uh, if at all you do not know an answer it's fine sometimes you can ask them like you know if if it's okay for them to share the answer that you are not aware of or you can ask them is it okay if i can you know check this and get back to you these are all the things that's going to put you over the edge over the other candidates that's mainly because you're going to show that i am invested in this process and you can trust me on this moving on knowledge about the company and the various news so when i see recently especially most of the candidates that i've interviewed do not have any idea of anything about the company again this is where you can show that you are apart from the other candidates you know whichever company you are applying to make sure that you read a little bit about the company who is the current ceo was there any management change recently what are the new products if that's a product company you know what are the kind of news that they are in you know when either the hr or the hiring manager anybody starts talking to you and if you say that hey yeah listen i did read this news and i think it's great that you know the company xyz is doing this i'm so excited about the future of the company that really gives you an edge over the rest of the company you know candidates and um, moving on your personality so this is mostly covered from the main other uh, points soft skills there you show that you know you can talk well you know to address people well and that's my cat say hi to eva i'm sorry <laughs> moving on uh try not overstepping in the name of soft you know small talks do not overstep do not become informal but then when you are going to be interviewed do not put your informal self out you can do that at a later point in time when you join the company and join the team and you get to know the people but you know it's good to have a small talk which does not overstep the line do not get personal do not try to show that you're over friendly do not do all of that and then about the in-person interview now, guys presentation matters a lot the first impression is the best impression so for an in-person interview if ask you to come at 8 30 make sure you have your breakfast 
it reached the interview location by 8 20 ish make sure that you are you you have eaten well good dressed and also make sure you're dressed very well crisp shirt and a pant and all the shoes well kept hair all of that jazz so that's for the men and for women you can go for skirts you can go for knee length skirts i would suggest skipping fit and flare even if you do fit and flare make it make sure it's not flashy uh, it's does not have a lot of prints this is for both men and women make sure there are not a lot of prints go for bold colors bright bright is fine but not too colorful go for neutral shades too and uh, keep it crisp and clean that's about your presentation and like i said when you're going for an in-person interview make sure you read the job description again if you have missed it it's fine just send out an email to the recruiter just get read the job description read the skill set prepare for the skill set and most of them, most of the in-person interviews do go based on your resume, which is why I cannot stress enough that do not lie in your resume because the questions will be from your resume. And you'll start asking questions from the skill set that they are looking for to make sure you're brushed on the knowledge of that and also know the technologies that you have worked on. So that is that and also even if you do not know the answer, like I said, make sure to note it down ask them can i note this down you know i'm curious to know what the answer is for this probably i can learn about this and can i get back to you with an answer all this will set you apart it's okay if you do not know the answer most of us might not know i might be good at my job because i've worked on this project for too long and you might be good at your job because you've been at the project for too long but that does not mean when i ask you questions about my my project and if you do not know the answer it's fine but as long as you're ready to learn that's what everyone is looking for make sure you uh, you know glassdoor is a great company a uh, great app great website you can just key in the company that you're going to see their salaries see what the company uh, you know the employees or the ex-employees have to say about the ceo the management their company uh, you know the pros and cons so weigh your options see if you would be right but just because you want to change a job get a job do not be in a hurry. Pick the job which is right for you, where you will be spending because that's where you'll be spending most of your day. So see if they have work-life balance, what kind of benefits do they give you, how is the compensation, a lot of things. You know, make sure whatever that you are looking for is included. Do not just, you know, do not compromise because if you're not, if you're going to be compromising, you're going to be looking for a job outside very soon. So make sure you pick the company that's best for you. You can use Google Glassdoor, which is one of the best websites. I use it all the time. For in-person interview, these are the best things. Like you know, as I said, if you're feeling nervous when before a person is coming in, try and have a very small talk. If the hiring manager asks them what's the culture like, ask about the teammates. Like you know, ask about the day-to-day -day job. Ask if you know if you would be a right fit. Then that might give them an opportunity to ask you questions back. So, you know, you both will end up having a conversation and also, like I said, if you're unable to answer the technicalities, it is fine. Most of them just see how are you able to approach a problem rather than the answer itself. So make sure you give a positive vibe but not super confident. They like confident but not super confident. So these are a few points about in-person. Now moving on, it is for technologies to learn. I'm just going to tell you a few of the technologies which is currently relevant and has a lot of market and do not spend a lot of money if you're just a, uh, you know if you're just a fresher do not put a lot of money in every course because you really do not know if that's a path that you'll be choosing once you've gotten in once you have hands-on once you have a little bit of rough idea these are a good uh, starting point for you to see if that's what you know interests you and then you can go by it I'm just gonna list them out um, so it's 5G, voice technology and NLP, then you have AR and VR, then you have blockchain, then you have DevOps, you have big data, you have Hadoop, Hive under it, and then you have cloud computing, AWS, and the best AI and machine learning. Let's not forget cybersecurity too. So this is if you're from the technology, these are the technologies which you can check out and see if you want to learn about it more unless you really want to master it and that's a complete domain that you want to choose i would really not uh you know i wouldn't suggest putting a lot of money into it if you're not sure about going and then salary negotiation um uh, i know this is the best part
bad for most of us. Most of the companies will give you about 30 to 40 percent hike. Whatever is your current CTC, make sure you include all of the other benefits your current company is giving. It could be in terms of bonus, it could be in terms of stocks, it could be in terms of transportation, it could be in terms of food, it could be in terms of a cell phone connection, it could be in terms of say internet, you know, there could be a lot of benefits your company is giving. Try to put a monetary value for each of that. Try to, uh, you know, just when someone talks to you about it, put your base as well as try to have all of your benefits and say in total, this is what I'm currently getting. So based on that, you can always and always go for 30 to 40% more. But usually it ranges between 30% and then it totally depends on the hiring manager as well. But you can always start off with your base plus all the benefits, C at 40% and that's the uh, amount that you can ask for and mostly that's what you will get. So this wraps my session and I hope this was beneficial you guys. If you make sure you like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell notification. I'll come back next saturday 11 o'clock with another video and i might post bonus videos and if i post bonus videos the information will be available on my instagram story so i highly recommend you follow me on instagram bye bye shine bright